We've all heard of the powerful Poseidon, the god of the seas, and his niece Athena, the goddess of wisdom and strategic warfare. And you've probably also heard that the relationship between them was not easy. Poor Medusa eventually became one of the victims of the quarrels between the two. But the animosities between Athena and Poseidon are not the work of chance. And today, you will learn about the origin of this rivalry. This video is brought to you by Magellan TV. With one of the most diverse catalogs on the internet, Magellan TV is the right streaming platform for you as a history buff. You will find numerous documentaries about wars, biographies, ancient and modern history, archaeology, and other topics. I'm actually watching one of their documentaries, called King Tut Forgotten Treasure. This documentary tells the story of the discovery of the untouched tomb of Pharaoh Tutankhamun and all the artifacts found there that helped to better understand the great Egyptian civilization. But Magellan TV has much more than historical documentaries. The catalog has more than 3,000 documentaries from many different genres, such as science and technology, travel and adventure, true crime, art and culture, and much more. All documentaries have been carefully curated by the Magellan team to give you the best experience and new titles are added weekly. The Magellan TV app is very easy to use and works on any device. You can even cast from your phone to your TV. So check it out now. Click the link below to get a full month free. In ancient Greece, there was a region that is now known as Attica. There, Cecrops reigned, a being who was born of his own land and had a serpent's tail and a man's trunk. Under his rule, the city of Cecrops flourished. This city was surrounded by the seas. Fishing was essential in this society, as much of the people's food was taken from the sea. Due to its dependence on the sea, the cult of Poseidon was strong in the region. The god of the seas wanted a city that would glorify him, and for this reason, he went to Cecropia. People of Cecropia, consecrate this city to the Lord of the Seas and you will have the ocean as your backyard. Your people will overtake all others while you are on the seas. Change the name of the city to Poseidonia and you will receive my blessings. The god hit the ground with his trident and a fountain of salt water began to gush forth. This is my gift to you. Before you leave for the sea, kneel before the fountain and it will tell you if it is safe to sail. Suddenly, a strong flash interrupted Poseidon. In the middle of the light, there was the silhouette of a female figure. It was Athena, goddess of wisdom and strategic warfare. The goddess also wanted to be the patroness of the city. The goddess addressed the crowd, who were already surprised by Poseidon's visit, and who now felt perplexed before such a majestic deity. Citizens of Attica, if you choose me as the protector of the city, beauty and wisdom will bear fruit in that city. The arts and sciences will develop like nowhere else in the world. The goddess struck her spear to the ground, and the beautiful olive tree was born in the hole. This is my gift. I know how arid the earth is around you, but the fruits of this plant may be your food. Besides, you can use its oil to ward off the darkness and warm your homes. The people were amazed at the gift. Cecrops, fearing to infuriate the eventually overlooked god, thought that the population of the city should decide what god to honor. The men lived from the sea, and all of them voted for Poseidon. The women, on the other hand, who lived from the land, thought that the gifts of Athena were superior. Since there were more women than men in the city, Athena won. Poseidon was furious and did not accept the decision of the crowd. There is only one honorable way to decide. Grab your weapons and fight me. Poseidon was one of the most powerful gods. He believed Athena was no match for him. But the brave goddess had no fear and prepared for the clash. The battle between the gods began and they measured forces. The dispute was interrupted by a bolt of Zeus. This dispute will be discussed at the Council of the Gods of Olympus, where the fate of the city will be decided. On Mount Olympus, 
the gods met to settle the dispute between Athena and Poseidon. Zeus was the head of the meeting and allowed the other gods to decide on the subject. All the male gods voted for Poseidon, and all the goddesses voted for Athena. As chairman of the board, Zeus abstained, and Athena was the winner by only one vote of difference. And so the ancient city of Cecropia came to be known as Athens. In honor of the goddess, a beautiful temple was built on top of the Acropolis in her honor. However, Poseidon's fury made life difficult for the Athenians. They were no longer welcome at sea. The concerned population went to the Oracle of Delphi. The Pythia told them that Poseidon's fury would only be diminished if Athena's women were punished. To reconcile with the god, all the Athenian women lost the right to vote. To seal the peace between Athena and Poseidon, a beautiful temple was built in honor of the god at Cape Sunion. The god was magnanimous and forgave the people of Athena, allowing the city to keep the gift given by the god. Thus, in Greece, a city emerged that would stand out from the rest. It took thousands of years for Athenian women to recover their right to vote.